The weekend is here. Rest is near. Welcome on the show, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott, and I've got a lot of things to discuss and a lot of things to show you too. The Tokyo Paralympics is taking place right now. The awards, uh, the, uh, the, the draws for the Euro and the um, UEFA Champions League took place. I'll show you all of that. Don't worry. But I've got Shenwa Jidagba on the show this morning. And you know Shen, Shen would always um, take on anyone without fear or favor. Shen, good morning. Welcome on the show. Good morning, Wale Scott. The pleasure joining you on Plus TV <laughs> Africa Plus Sports. Thank good. you for the accolades. Thank you. Now, Super Eagles technical advisor Gennot Rohr has called up a total of 30 players for next month's opening rounds of the FIFA World Cup quarter Qatar 2022 qualifying campaign, in which Nigeria will host Liberia in Lagos on Friday, 3rd September, that's day one, and tackle Cape Verde in Mindelo on Tuesday, 7th September, that's day two. Now, Franco-German Rohr has stocked largely with his dependables as the race to Qatar begins with goalkeepers Maduka Okoye, Francis Uzoho, defenders William Ekong, Abdullah Shew, Chidozi Awaziem, and Leon Balogun, midfielders Wilfred Indidi and Ogene Karo Etebo, and forwards Hamed Musa, Alex Iwobi, Moses Simon, and Victor Osime on the roster. The situation with UK-based players who may not be heading to Cape Verde, which is on the red list of the British government with regards to the global coronavirus pandemic, has enlarged the roster, and should the situation remain unchanged, the eight UK-based players on the list would head back to base after the clash with Liberia at the Testing Balogun Stadium in Lagos on Friday. She will help you hear what I just read now. Well, um, it's a race for Qatar 2022. Yeah. And uh, the 30 players invited, it looks as if uh, most of them will not even be available. Remember that uh, Gianni Infantino wrote a letter to the UK government who said um, Nigeria is a red zone and they will not allow them to travel to Nigeria and uh, precisely the Commonwealth region so that uh, when they come, they will not be quarantined for 10 days. Uh, so all those are Premier League stars. looks more like uh, they will not be allowed to come for this fixture. Um, some of those uh, players for South America also. Uh, the Italians are also saying such. So the likes of Vitor Sime, uh, the likes of um, other players who play in the Italian Serie A may also be affected. But I have an issue. Like I've always said, there can't be any perfect list in the world. But... This double standard is what gets me upset. And one of such is uh, Valentine uh, Ozonwafo. How many games has he played that you are inviting him to the national team? There was no even space for home base players, am I right? True that, yeah, true. And the league just ended. We saw some um, brilliant players who showed like a million stars. You know, you can't give them a call up. Wale, I racked my brain and I sat down. I was ruminating now. When was the last time Nigeria scored in a match via the free kick? I, I put that question to you. And we saw lots of free kick being scored in the Nigeria professional footballing. I've always said it that, see, do we have talent in the MPFL? Yes. What don't we have is administrators. And Amajima Vipini goes about talking about this, talking about that. But you are not making the league viable. You know what shocked me? When the draws of the Nations Cup was held, you know we are in the same group with uh, the Egyptians, uh, Guinea-Bissau, and uh, uh, well, what they call themselves, I think Sudan. And I asked myself, the fulcrum of the Egyptian national team are still the guys from Al-Ali and by extension Zamalek. It means that they put a pride of place in their league. Let me ask and you a question. Guys, sure, let me ask you a question. Is there any hope for the average Nigerian player who plays a straight in Nigeria? Is there any hope for them? Which hope? All the vibes that, <laughs> you asking, now that <laughs> your military for sports said, uh, she saw the diary during the uh, league starter that the uh, during Roy mandate, he must include four players, he must include five players. Where is all those statements now? Because all of you are not sincere with the process. It's a, and, 
and I like to show with Guzo, who sit now and say uh, the successful completion of the league season, where Apa United won the league. Wale, Apa United who even won the league. Are they going to do anything on the continent? No. So we've seen so many things happen. And you are seeing what is happening. So for the players trying their trade in the league, it's rather unfortunate that they will not be given a look in. You can't really hinge it on the uh, doorstep of the coach. But it's because we don't have anything viable. And so if those players don't get to come, all those guys that I've mentioned that are playing in uh, several leagues, the question is, who are, who are going to prosecute the game against Liberia? Yes, you can say we'll get a result against Liberia. But when we go to Cape Verde, it will be much more difficult. And it's very imperative that you start your campaign on an impressive note. So the lead, for me, I don't have a problem. I'm just waiting for what will happen. Because if I didn't wrote a letter to UK government, they are rejecting it. They said no. Because uh, this video, uh, they don't want any player to leave for their country and then come back and get quarantine for 10 days. It should be too much of an asking for them. Okay, so um, the reason why I actually called you on the show today is because you have um, a like mind with me. And I want to first of all start, before I say this story, I want to say shame. Shame on the able-bodied uh, Olympians. Shame on the Ministry of Sports and everybody else involved. Because um, our physically challenged people always make us proud. Despite the fact that we don't look their way, we don't take care of them, they are like the stone the builder has refused. Now, Team Nigeria's Suabidu Galadima, in the early hours of this morning, qualified for the finals of the men's 100 meters T47 at the ongoing Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. Commencing in the hits, Galadima placed fourth as one of the next best two times with a season's best of 1L.14 1 L 14 seconds. The final comes up later today by 11.33 a.m. Nigerian time. So in a, few, in a bit, in a bit, the guy is going to be contesting again. And Shehu, it is sad, sad to note that um, the last Olympics, Rio, um, our Paralympians came home with eight gold, two silver, and two bronze medals. Nigeria, the able-bodied ones, have never gotten close to that. And now, we've already won a gold, though. Somebody has qualified for the main event in the 100 meters right now as we speak. And at 11.33 today, Nigerian time, he'll be competing. And he might win another medal again. Well, well, I've always said to you that um, in Nigeria, sports is what we call gel gel. It's a joke. We are not serious and we are not true to uh, development of sports. Uh, those able-bodied athletes, you can't really blame them. Because in Senna climbs, this is not how to prepare for Olympics. Olympics is a four-year program. From the day the last host hands the betting to the new host, Olympics training has started. You don't start Olympics training six months or one year to that period and think you'll go ahead and win the Olympics. No, it's a serious process. And so those athletes are rather unfortunate that we are in a country where they do fire brigade approach. Even the Paralympians that go ahead to make us proud all the time, the physically challenged athletes, they do it because of what we call power of Niger. That power of Niger usually sees them through. And because they have so much power on the upper extremity of the body. That's why you see that we do well in power powerlifting because the upper extremity of the body has so much power. I remember one statement credited to Yakubo Adeshoko. Yakubo Adeshoko said he got into the gymnasium and he found out that most of the equipment that are there, he has never even seen them before, let alone practice with them. I've always told you, Wiley, that in England, there is a program that they have. They call it eight years to podium in Serhos Park, very close to Crystal Palace. That means they will train you for eight years and you will be on the podium. Let me shock you. In 1996 at Atlanta, Nigeria won two gold, one silver, and three bronze medals. Choma Ajuma of Parayabuen, and of course the Atlanta 96 football team. The Great Britain team had one gold, eight silver, and six bronze medals. 
fast track to 2020 Olympics. The America, the, the, the Great Britain team had 27 gold, 23 silver, and 17 bronze medals. A total of 67 medals. Guess what Nigeria had? Nigeria had one silver, blessing of Borodudu, and one bronze in Esebrume in long jump. So from 1996 to this 2020, you can see the geometric progression of the Great Britain team. That's how to prepare for a competition, not this wishy-washy thing that somebody will come and start uh, saying all sorts of things. And sure. you know the sad part, Wale, we went to Rio 2016, uh, Rio, uh, Tokyo 2020, we came back with so much problem. Other countries are started preparing for Paris 2024, but we are setting up a committee to look at why Enequity was washing his uh, kit. We are looking at how uh, Puma kit was not used. You know, we are still setting up committees to investigate. And what you say that committee is already 2024. You are not serious. You are joking. Okay, Shell. Um, please don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Um, um, if you are watching the show right now, the lady you saw just won a gold medal for Nigeria in powerlifting. That's this lady. She just won a gold medal for Nigeria in powerlifting. And Galadima was the other guy that you saw who is going to be actually running today at 11.33 Nigerian time. So try and look out for, the, for it. I'm sure, this guy, I'm sure he's going to win a medal. I didn't say he's gold, though, but I'm very sure he's going to win a medal. I'm going to be showing you the, uh, the, 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 the draws from yesterday. The whole draws from yesterday. And Shane and I will try and talk about, um, try and diagnose um, which clubs will do well and who will meet who. But there are some clubs who have major problems. Now, Lionel Messi's new club, Pagi Saint-Germain, will play Manchester City. Managed by the Argentines, a former Barcelona coach, Pep Guardiola, after being drawn together in Champions League Group A. Now, Messi joined Qatar-owned PSG, who will also face Bundesliga side RB Leipzig and Belgium club Bruges from Barcelona this month. Now, Abu Dhabi-owned City lost the last season's final to Premier League rivals Chelsea, who were drawn in Group H against Juventus. Zenit St. Petersburg and Malmo. Real Madrid will play Inter Milan, Shakhtar Donetsk and Moldova's Sheriff Traspol in Group D, while Spanish champions Atletico Madrid and Liverpool were together in Group B with former winners Porto and AC Milan. Welcome back. Shane, I want to thank you very much for joining us on the show this morning. Thank you very much, Shane. Always a pleasure to do this with you. God bless you, Wiley. God Thank bless the production team. And uh, God bless uh, Plus TV and Plus Sports. Thank you very much, bro. Now, Great Britain's Jacko Van Gars won gold in the cycling of the Paralympics on Thursday. That's not the story. Twelve years after suffering a life-threatening injury while serving in Afghanistan, Van Gars, who set a world record in qualifying hit, from a beat fellow Brit Finley Graham in the C3 3000 meters individual pursuit final. David Nicholas of Australia took bronze. Now that was Van Gars. Let me tell you his story. You know, like in Nigeria here, we do NYSC, youth call, you know. But um, abroad, they actually, some of them go to the army. So the guy was in Afghanistan at a point, he was serving in the army. He got caught in fire. He was shot a lot of times. He suffered life-threatening injuries. He's back. And he just won gold in cycling at the Paralympics. And he actually had, is, a, is a Paralympian today because of the injuries he suffered in Afghanistan, Van Gars. The story of a man who comes back from the dead. He comes back from the dead. Plus sports on PLUS TV Africa. Thank you for staying with us. Join us, same time on Monday, same station. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.